Welcome to the Stewardship Leader Podcast, brought to you by the Christian Stewardship Network. CSN exists to encourage, teach, and connect church and stewardship leaders to help them create and lead healthy stewardship ministries in their church. You can learn more about CSN at christianstewardshipnetwork.com. Welcome to Stewardship Insights, a brief conversation to help you become a better stewardship leader. In today's episode, we're going to talk about understanding and equipping the next generation. Now, who are the next generation? Well, first of all, let's talk about who the millennials and post-millennials are. These are folks that were born between 1981 to 1996, so they're somewhere between 22 and 37 years old. And the post-millennials were born between 1997 to present. So the oldest post-millennial is about 21 years old. So he or she is just entering into this adult life. And with me today to really dive into this topic of reaching this generation with the message of stewardship and generosity is Rachel Rupert. Now, for those of you who have not had a chance to meet Rachel yet, Rachel is our ministry director, and she also happens to be my daughter. So over the last 20-some years, she's been exposed to stewardship teaching, and perhaps because of that, and because she's a millennial herself, she has, I believe, a unique insight into not only millennials, but how the church can come alongside and really equip this group of people. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. I think there's a lot to learn about millennials. Overall, if you think about millennials, and if you take some time to Google millennials, you'll find Unfortunately, a lot of joking about our generation and how we tend to be self-serving, selfish, and pretty much incompetent at adulting. And millennials happen to be one of the biggest missing age ranges in our churches today. If I were to go into a church building, I think one of the hardest things for me to find are people my age. I I find myself surrounded by more middle age and older people when I go into church and I'm part of a big church. And that's one of the problems we face, I think, across the nation is that we're missing a big age range. Yeah, I agree with you, Rachel. I also think that they have a greater interest in finances uh, than we really give them credit for. And they're more willing to postpone rites of passage, such as marriage, starting a family, and buying a home. Some of the statistics that I've been exposed to, really, I remember looking into what the average marriage age is today, and used to be. I mean, I got married at 20 years old. Today, 26 to 29 is the age range, so it's considerably later in life, and that's not just because of education. There are several factors that contribute to that, but one of them is because There are stages of life, and millennials are really more cautious about entering those stages. So let me ask you a couple of questions that I think our audience will really benefit from. What are the questions that millennials are asking related to financial matters? Sure. Um, I think there's a lot of curiosity about finances. If there's anything that my generation is really good at, it's about being driven to succeed. And you're totally right about postponing things. You see people all around who, um, who are my age and they're waiting to try to succeed in their finances and in their career before they do anything. I think what drives us is we're trying to reach goals. One of the things that we're trying to do is we're trying to pay off any debt we have. A lot of the millennial age, we've gone to college and I see people all over social media who are really focusing on paying off their student loans. A lot of people are working on buying their house uh, or saving for a house. And surprisingly, there are actually a lot of millennials who are very interested in investing. And I've looked at a recent study from the Transamerica Center for Retirement Studies, and it actually showed that 70% of millennials have already started saving by 22 for retirement. And the same percentage, 70% of millennials have opted into their 401k plans at work. Mm. So you'll see that millennials are actually very financially interested and they do their research. They're looking at the big target goals for finances and that's what they're working on. They're working on establishing themselves and and setting themselves up for success down the line and that's why they're holding off on some of the more traditional things because they're wanting to succeed financially. I also believe that because of the way you guys have been raised under having social media and technology at your fingertips, that there has been 
also an equal, probably a greater extent of being influenced by peer pressure, social media, obviously seeing everybody's life and everybody's life is great on social media. And that has created more of a competition in your age group where you're trying to not outdo each other, but certainly try to meet that standard that's out there. So where do we go from here? As stewardship leaders, how can we help your generation make sure that you're not only succeeding in meeting these financial goals, but also doing it in a way that has an eternal impact and has a lifelong purpose in it, not just money itself, but the bigger picture. Yeah, I think uh, you hit it on the head right there with technology. Technology has served a very great purpose with millennials. There's something that we have um, that no generation before us has had when it comes to finances. Everything we need to know is at our fingertips. We can open an IRA account from our phone if we wanted to. It's mm -hmm. so easy for us to succeed. But where we're lacking and where we really need the church to come and meet the millennial generation is training them in the biblical foundation of stewardship. Because if we do reach all of the goals that we're striving for, if we attain the success that we're looking to have, when we get to that point, if we accumulate wealth, but we're lacking in the stewardship basics and understanding the heart of generosity and what our role is in the church to, to build the church and to give to the church out of a heart of stewardship, um, then we're it's for nothing. Mm -hmm. Because if we don't know how to do that, the wealth that we do have is either going to be incredibly self-serving or it's going to be squandered trying to compete for all of the people on social media and try to get all of the new products and all of the nice Teslas and all of the things that people are so easily drawn to. So what we need to focus on and what the church needs to focus on is targeting this generation because whether you like it or not and whether you think that millennials are just a big joke or not, at some point, your millennials are going to be who you look to for decision making. They're going to be running the church. They're going to be running the nation. Mm -hmm. It's an important generation because this is a pivotal generation that we're, this is the first generation that's had technology to the extent that we've had. And we need to steward that. Yeah, that's really, really good. I think you said something that's really important. Uh, the biblical foundation that we have through the word of God and in the church can give meaning and reason and answer that why question that the world can't answer because what we see on social media what we see through technology is a lot of information that can actually help us achieve a certain level of success but if that success is only material if that success is only earthly then at some point no matter who it is whether it's a millennial or gen x or whatever they're going to find that money doesn't satisfy money is never the answer mm -hmm. and these millennials are trying to figure this out just like all of us you know, generations before you guys did. And if we don't come alongside and provide that information early on, there could be some that never get this information and pretty much squander their life. So it's a matter of imparting this biblical foundation to this generation, because like you said, Rachel, these are the future leaders. No generation is skipped in that sense. Somebody from your group will be leading our churches in the future. And if they don't have a biblical foundation on finances, on generosity, the church will struggle. In fact, one of the statistics that's really sad is the fact that giving to churches by this group of millennials, your group, has gone down over the years, whereas giving has actually gone up. Overall, giving has gone up to nonprofit and charitable organizations, but giving to the church has gone down, which again is another indicator that millennials, and this is something we know about millennials, they like to give to a cause. They want to see that their money is actually making a difference. They're not as apt to give to an institution like the church when they think, well, I don't know what's going to happen with that money. Are they going to build a bigger building? Are they going to just pay the staff? Like, what's happening with the money I'm giving to the church? And my generation was a lot more about just following the rules. I'm supposed to tithe. That's what I do. You guys are, because of the way you were raised, because of the technology that's driven all the information you received, it's changed that mindset. And we need to, as a church, we need to come alongside and bring that balance of what does God's word say in relation to money. And I think when we do that, I believe that the millennials and post-millennials will actually walk in unity with God's word because they'll find the real answer, which really is the Lord, not money, not success. But there is a way to create balance there. Yeah, I think you're right. And the fact is that 
because millennials do have a heart to give and they have a hunger for finances, you you have a whole generation that has such tremendous potential to oh, yeah. be amazing stewards and amazing, very generous people because they have that heart. They're just lacking the basic foundation. And I think because there's a hunger for it, they're going to be receptive. Mm -hmm. If you just make the time for them, if you seek them out, they're going to be ready and willing and they're going to make a huge impact on the church once they understand what it really means to give or to tithe or whatever it is that they're missing. That's great. Well, thank you, Rachel, for your insight today. We're going to do a deeper dive into this topic because it's one that we really need to both understand better, but also get some how-tos, like how do we actually now do this? How do we equip this generation? But I want to thank you for joining me today, and I want to thank you, our listener, for joining us with Stewardship Insight. To learn more and gain access to other Stewardship Insight content, please visit us at christianstewardshipnetwork.com. We'll see you next time.